This video is to introduce the two different color theories of light, specifically for grade 10 science. There are two theories here that you're going to be learning, um, but as you go through it, hopefully you'll notice that the two are very much related. That if you have an understanding of the additive color theory and what the primary colors are, that the subtractive theory should follow from that. Make sure that you write these two theories in your own words in your notes so that you can refer back to them later. The additive color theory tells us that white light is made from a combination of light colors, in other words, wavelengths. The primary colors of light are blue, green, and red. If you're an art student especially, you'll be familiar with primary colors for pigment. You need to try to forget what you know and relearn these primary colors as a separate thing to know. So again, those primary colors are blue, green, and red. The combination of these three colors creates white light. On the other hand, the subtractive color theory tells us that colored objects absorb certain wavelengths of light and reflect the rest. This is what allows our eyes to detect color as we only see the light that is reflected. Here you can see an image that depicts the additive color theory. In the middle you can see white and on the outsides you see the different primary colors, right? Red, green, and blue. And it stated on that first slide that when you combine these three colors you get white. So that's why white is in the middle. This is a Venn diagram, right? This circle here represents green, this circle is blue, and this circle is red. So this part you get in the middle is what happens when you combine all three of them. And you can see as well if I combine green and blue, then I get a color called cyan. If you combine blue and red, you get magenta, and green and red gives you yellow. If you've ever set up the colors on a TV screen or a computer monitor, you might even recognize yellow, cyan, and magenta as the colors that you're used to seeing there. Now, just so that we can also be clear, you'll also see that we can represent these using the ray model of light. So for instance, if I wanted to show the combination of red and green, what I would do is draw a ray representing each of those colors. When you do this on paper, you don't need to use multiple colors of pens, I'm just doing it here to accentuate it. Really what you need is the letters beside the rays to represent what color they are. And we know that the combination of red and green will form yellow. We can take this another step further than just what is obvious from the Venn diagram. If you are to combine cyan and red, what will happen? So let's say we already have cyan light and we need to combine it with red. Well, we know that cyan light, so let's say this is our cyan, is really made up of two other colors. Okay, so I said we're combining cyan and red. Generally speaking, you're only going to represent rays of the primary colors. So what we really need here instead of showing the cyan is having green and blue and red. Well and what happens when we combine all three of those colors? That's all three primary colors coming together. So we know that this combination will lead to white light. So by combining two of the primary colors, we can get what's called a secondary color. 
And if we combine a secondary with the opposing primary color, we always get white. Finally, we'll look at the subtractive color theory in a bit more detail. This theory is what helps us figure out what our eye will see when we look at an object. So let's say, for instance, that I have a red object. We know that white light is going to hit that object. So it must consist of red, green, and blue light hitting it, because we know those three colors together creates white light. And let's say this light is coming from the sun or a light in your home. So here's white light hitting it. Well, this red object is going to, since red is a primary color, it will absorb any other primary color that hits it. So the only color that's actually going to reflect off this object is going to be the red wavelength. So that means if you're looking at it, then you are going to see the red object. This will hold true for an object made up of a combination of colors as well. For instance, if we have a cyan object this time, well, the white light's hitting it. What colors are going to be bouncing off here? Well, the only things that can bounce off are what the color of the object is made out of. So if the object is cyan, and we know that cyan is a combination of green and blue, well then that means that our green and our blue light are going to be what actually reflects off of it. It's going to absorb or subtract the red wavelengths here. And that means that our eye, looking at this object, is going to see cyan. Another way to consider this is to look at filters. So if we put a colored filter, like if you're wearing colored sunglasses, you may have noticed that you'll see things kind of in a strange color that way. So if I have, let's say, a green object this time. Here's my green object. And I know then that the light that comes off of this is green, right? All three wavelengths are going to hit it. Only green is going to be reflected. And let's say it goes through a red filter. So the light's going to go through a red filter. So the only thing that should get through my red filter is red. Green is a primary color. So it's not made of red, which actually means that nothing is going to get through it. So your eye will see the object as black. On the other hand, what if I had a yellow object? Well, yellow is made up of, <coughs> excuse me, green and red. So red and green are going to get through and let's say it goes through a green filter well then only green light is going to pass through so I will see the object as green